Hey YouTube, welcome back. We just finished doing another weekend race. This one was Marksman, and the three skills were Detonating Arrow, Multi-Shot, and the thing that I chose, Hail of Arrows. So I've never played Hail of Arrows before. There's a couple people in the Last Epoch community who swear by it. It's absolutely their favorite build. They've been playing it for multiple patches, and they keep telling me how busted it is. Going into this build, I only knew that it's it's kind of a different play style for a bow character. Not nearly as much clicking, not as much uh, kiting back and forth. You don't really feel like an AD carry from League of Legends. You just kind of have a long duration, non-hit, damage over time skill, and then you kite monsters into that uh, into that area, and then they take a ton of damage. I didn't know much going into this. I've been learning a whole bunch, and it's kind of busted. My, my brief TLDR for you about this skill is, it feels like Hail of Arrows is someone's firstborn child and they wanted to give this child the most opportunities in the world and they wanted to make sure that this mechanic and this mechanic and also this mechanic worked perfectly for it and everything synergized exactly how you'd want it to and you're going to drive them to every single soccer game and sign them up for every piano lesson check this build works too well you could trim out any portion of the mechanics or the damage or something about this build but as it stands right now it does a ton with very low investment, which means you can basically just build as tanky as you want and still kill every monster in the game. So we're going to give a brief rundown of this. For those of you who are in the Last Epoch community, if you've heard of Tunk, maybe you know TunkLab.com, or maybe you've heard Tunk's Cold, Reign of Winter, Hail of Arrows. That is literally the build that we are describing here. I will be linking both my build planner and the build planner that I used for reference that came from Tunk because he was happy enough to share that information with me. So here's the build. Let's go ahead and, uh, and talk about some of the things here. I'm going to give a rundown of the skills, items, idols, masteries. First, we're going to run through these sections of the, uh, of, the, of the video here so I can tell you about the build. And then we're going to talk about all the, like, the nuance and why the skill is so busted after that. There's YouTube chapters. Use them. So first up are the skills themselves. We have Hail of Arrows. Hail of Arrows is the thing dealing damage here. The most important points here are duration and AoE. I know it sounds funny, but we're going to be guzzling a ton of mana. We're going to use one skill every once in a while, and it's going to last for like 10 seconds. So we have an increased, uh, increased duration here. We're going to have increased duration on our gear and idols and other places. And then over here, we also have one point into the hunt, which is more duration. So it says there's only one active Hail of Arrows at a time, but you only really want one because you want as long a duration as possible. Why do we care about duration? There's a note here called Nowhere to Hide. This does not work for ailments, doesn't work for bleed, doesn't work for poison, but it does work for bow damage, which is all of our damage here. We are going to extend the duration of our Hail of Arrows as much as possible so that we can ramp up to the maximum damage bonus and then stay at the maximum da damage bonus for as long as possible. So we have four points in duration, five points in nowhere to hide, and then one with a more multiplier to our duration. The rest of this is just kind of like utility things that make it act the way we want it to act. We have four points into uh, volley for increased AOE. We have an extra more damage multiplier and an extra more damage multiplier over here because it's nice to diversify your more damage multipliers. We have two points in one going over to crystal arrows. The reason that we take crystal arrows is the, uh, is the unique bow that we're using, Reign of Winter. If you didn't have Reign of Winter, you still probably want to take Crystal Arrows because it gives you a freeze rate multi, because it applies chill to enemies, and it's nice to randomly freeze enemies. Strictly speaking, if you don't have uh, Reign of Winter, the bow, this is not a necessary thing, but you're going to want it anyways. Reign of Winter is a relatively easy, unique bow to farm. You should be taking this, and you should be farming the bow. Next up, we have one point and one point. This is some extra CC. Mana cost gives us damage, which is nice. But the real benefit of this is that we get to uh, apply some extra crowd control to the enemies. If you don't want these two nodes, you'd just be expecting to more damage multipliers down here. Next up for this, we're not going to talk about all the intricacies, but I will give you a rundown of the skill. This is Dark Quiver. So Dark Quiver, we're going to be expecting five points into uh, Nightfall here. This gives us a bunch of Glancing Blow chance. As soon as we step on one of these arrows, we're going to have Glancing Blows in the next couple seconds. And this, along with Arrow Guard, and some points in our mastery is going to make it so that we're always capped on glancing blow chance, which is basically just 35% damage reduction for anything that hits us. Next up, we have four, four, one, five for these points over here. So for the four points here, this is a bunch of flat damage. Remember, 
Hail of Arrows has 300% effectiveness of added damage, and it applies per second. So we have all the damage here to buff that. We have a more damage multiplier here. And then we also have this, Umbral Resolution. We're going to talk about this more later, but for right now, whenever we use a Black Arrow, we're going to consume any shadows that we've generated from other sources in order to get more damage multiplier. So you'll see that oftentimes we want to um, make sure that we have at least three shadows or two shadows and then we'll shift because that makes a third one in order to get this 100% more damage bonus off of Dark Quiver. Shift we're specking for damage, which is basically something that I've never done. Most of my shift, whenever I spec it, I take shurikens. But for this skill, we're specking slightly different than I normally would. We're also coming down here, uh, getting some extra movement speed, getting some mana stuff, getting into lasting presence. We do want to create a shadow behind us because we're going to consume that shadow with Dark Quiver to get a more damage multiplier. We have one point in shadow slip to make us invulnerable while shifting. Pretty much every shift spec should always have this because the node is so good. Then we've got a little bit of healing and a little bit of healing. These points here are important to us. We have two, one, three. You could drop some of these dodge points if you wanted to to get some extra increased damage multipliers. But the important part here is the minus uh, the minus 30 distance and the 150% increased damage. So this is a big source of increased damage for our Hail of Arrows. It means that anytime we use Hail of Arrows, we basically want to shift and then immediately use Hail of Arrows afterward because we want to uh, take advantage of all of these your next non-channeling attack. So Hail of Arrows has a absurd 10, 11, 12 second duration to it. And all of this increased damage from shift is going to apply over the entire 12 second duration. Decoy is here for two reasons. First of all, uh, we don't really have anything else to do, so we might as well use decoy. Uh, we use this to put a fear on enemies. This is not something that Tonk specs into, but it's something that I found very comfortable, so I'll recommend it to you as well. So we fear enemies. It's a little bit of CC. We taunt enemies, because that's what Decoy does by default. We have points into haste, which normally a marksman would get haste on hit, but we don't really hit enemies, so we use this to get haste, to run through monoliths, and just stay mobile. And then we also have a couple dodge points down here. So we have our four and one for an additional charge, one point in travel, and then some additional charge or some additional dodge while uh, while decoy actually exists. The last point here is smoke bomb, and I've actually been numlocking this. It feels reasonable to numlock, and there's enough times where you just want to get an additional shield for shroud in order to dodge the next attack. It feels fine, and you pretty much want smoke bomb up all the time. It feels it feels better to numlock smoke bomb than it does to numlock dark quiver. And I wanted to numlock something, and this felt fine enough. I was happy with it. So very often with Smoke Bomb, you'll see people go 1-4 because these points are great. They help you generate more Dust Shrouds in case you're not capped on your Glance Blow Chance. You'll see people go 1-1-1 one, 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 basically all the time in every single Smoke Bomb because it gives you Silver Shrouds. And Silver Shrouds for these three points here is a very high return on your investment. We want to uh, have a 100% chance of generating Shadows as often as possible because we want Shadows to use with Dark Quiver to get that big more damage multiplier. So those are the five skills. Let's talk about the mastery next. For the mastery here, you'll see that we have pretty much as much defense as possible. We are not specced into attack speed because attack speed doesn't really scale our damage. What we have is a couple points into dexterity, two, five, and five. You could max out Guile if you're in your 90s, level 95, level 96. This would be something that you would be interested in maxing out. But the important points here are the five points in evasion, five points in agility. We are virtually never standing still, which means we can always make use of the reduced damage or less damage taken while moving. So this is an excellent node for us because we're always moving. We have some glancing blows and then one point into sapping and four points into, sorry, eight points into coated blades. This uh, says our next bow attack consumes mana to deal additional uh, or to deal more damage. Uh, again, because we have one big attack that lasts for 12 seconds. Next up in Blade Dancer, we have eight points into Glancing Blow Chance, just to keep us nice and safe. You could flex some points down here, just spending five points to get movement speed, but that's up to you. The last points here in Marksman, this is the brunt of our points. We have defense, and then we have some pretty absurd synergies along with Hail of Arrows. So let's talk about the boring nodes first, and then we'll talk about the absolutely insane nodes after that. The boring nodes here, we have 115. We have extra points. There's not too many good things for us to spec into. So we're happy enough to spend points just to get 
crit avoidance here, nothing else. We have some concentration points. We have a lot of mobility. We can run around, we're gonna dodge stuff. So the flat dodge here, the percent dodge, the movement speed, this all feels very good for us. Next up, we have one and one for additional silver shrouds. The silver shrouds is a great way of staying alive. And we have thief's quiver. So we are not playing a bleed hail of arrow build. We're not playing poison hail of arrows. We're just playing hail of arrow. And hail of arrows, even though it's damage over time, it's bow damage. So thief's quiver does give us leech in our damage over time build. We don't need bleeding. Or we don't need bleeding heart. We don't need some weird, uh, unique quiver. We're just using this, and then boom, done. We have leech. We're at the end of the mastery portion here, but we're going to start talking about why Hail of Arrows is so busted. Um, we talked about the skills and the passive so far, but let's start talking about elemental arrows here. We know that in Hail of Arrows, Hail of Arrows uh, lasts for a long time. We shoot it once, lasts for 10, 11, 12 seconds, and has 300% effectiveness of added damage. We have eight points in this, which means that when we shoot, when we expend an elemental arrow, we get 24 fire damage and 24 lightning damage. So we have 48 damage. We also have these points up here that says you can consume additional elemental arrows with each, with each attack. So if we consume three of these, we have 48 times three, which is just shy of uh, 150. Uh, next up, we have ethereal arrows over here. Ethereal arrows says that we have bow mana cost, uh, which translates into increased damage at a 500% value. So if we had uh, a mana cost of five, 500% of that, 25% increased damage, and 25 divided by 10, that'd be like 2.5% increased damage per point. So if my mana cost were five, this node's not very good. It doesn't really do anything. But what if your mana cost is 75 instead? So Hail of Arrows lasts for a long duration. Shoot this here. It has a mana cost of 75. And for that mana cost, these points give us a uh, 500% increased of that and then divided by 10 in order to give you a better idea of how many how much percent increased damage per point you're getting because we're specking 10 points to ethereal arrows tldr this is 37.5 percent increased damage per point so you could spend a point over here get seven percent increased damage seven percent increased damage per point that's pretty normal stuff a 10 percent increased damage per point 10% increased damage for one point is a pretty good thing if you've you know seen other builds. This is a this is 37% increased damage per point. So we're getting 375% increased damage out of these 10 nodes here. Holy moly. So we have all of our flat damage coming in from the elemental arrows that we're specking into. We have all of our percent increased damage coming from the ethereal arrow nodes here. We have more damage coming in from coated blades over here. We have additional area of effect coming in from Master Archer over here. Not only that, but uh, Hail of Arrows gets a big more damage multiplier the longer it lasts. And then you're encouraged to build duration on top of this in order to make that one big hit last for 10, 11, 12 seconds. So for some reason, you can also get increased duration with Hail of Arrows on your idols. And you can have one, two, three, four of these. You can also get increased duration of Hail of Arrows on your helmet, and you could even get it on your chest piece if you had some extra space on your chest piece, which I don't. So we have all sorts of uh, instances of duration. We have more damage multipliers. We have flat damage coming in from, uh, from using Dark Quiver, which is 20 flat damage from this, and then also from all of the elemental arrows in our mastery. So we have flat damage. We have percent increased damage, not only from the mana cost, but also from using shift, because we have 150% damage here, 15% damage here, and another 50% damage here, just by shifting. We have more damage multipliers, not only from our mastery, but also the synergy of consuming our shadows using Umbral Resolution here to get the 100% more damage multiplier, which is double your damage, and then 48% more damage here. Did I miss anything? What that means for your gearing process is that you don't really need damage. <laughs> Instead, you'd like to have things like mana regeneration, life, 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 cooldown recovery speed. That's an important one. Uh, void res, dexterity. Dexterity is good because it gives you dodge as well. It gives you some percent increased damage, but like dexterity, mana regen, dexterity, mana regen, dexterity, mana regen, dexterity, life, life, dexterity, mana regen. These are the kinds of things you're looking for in all your gear because you don't need damage. 
So this is the character and I'll link this build, uh, this build planner in the description of this video here. This is what I ended up with after about 20 hours of playing. It was 20 hours of me trying really hard, but it's about 20 hours over three days of me playing this character for the weekend tournament. So let's say, for example, that you were going to take a build like this and instead of gearing it up over 20 hours in a weekend tournament, let's say that you wanted to play this as a permanent character played in perma softcore, perma hardcore, and give yourself a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month to gear up the character as well as possible. You could do things like include an Aurora's Time Glass. So we have a bunch of Glands and Blows. Glands and Blows and Armor are both good against hits, but we're not particularly strong against damage over time because nothing is particularly strong against damage over time. It's just hard to mitigate that in Last Epoch as it stands right now. So Roar's Time Glass is good against damage of time. It's also just good in general. It's kind of absurd. So we can have like a little second life up here. We could also uh, choose to include some Ravenous Voids. And let's say that we wanted to gear out the rest of our resistances just to make things work. I have some, uh, some practice gear set aside to show you what this might look like if you wanted to play this character more long term. So we have about 2,900 life. So I had 27, now we're at 29, we're at 200 life higher. We also have a second life with the War's Time Glass, and we also have Ravenous Void, and these two items are, are pretty absurd together. So when it comes to gearing in Last Epoch, I wish that outliers like this needed to invest more in damage in order to get more damage, or maybe couldn't invest as easily into defenses to be as tanky as possible. Something something is not quite right with the balance of this build compared to, you know, any other build. There's just there's too much synergy, too much mechanical synergy, too much damage, too much um too many places that you can build defense where you're not really paying much of an opportunity cost in order to, you know, use your arrow guard, use your auroras, use your ravenous void, have a 10 second duration on this huge damage and kite monsters through it. There's just a little bit too much going on. But is this build good? Yeah, it's it's probably one of the best builds in all of Last Epoch right now. So if you want to know more about this, you can always drop by Twitch, twitch.tv slash pair the pig, ask questions here. You can leave uh, questions or comments in the comment section of this video as well. YouTube is a good place for that. Even Discord is a good place for that. So anyways, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. This build's a little bit too strong, but there are some people in the community who really like it. So just don't nerf it too much. And I'll see you next time.